Hi, it's Miss Angie again from the Owensville Batavia Branch Library. And today I want to talk to you today about fractured fairy tales. Now, fractured fairy tales are fairy tales that are a little bit different than what we are normally told when we're little. Like I have Kate and the Beanstalk. Usually that's Jack who climbs the beanstalk, but in this book it's Kate. Um, we got Cinderella over here, but it's all puppies. And Today, I'm going to tell you a different story about the three little pigs. But first, I want to remind you how normally we hear the story. So normally, we hear the story about the three little pigs. And we always have the first little pig made his house of straw. And then we have a second little pig who made his house out of sticks. And then we had a smart little pig who made his house out of brick. And one day along came a big bad wolf and he went to the first pig's house and he said, little pig, little pig, let me in. And the pig said, not by my hair and my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And that's exciting exactly what he did and he blew the house down and the little pig had to run to his brother's house. Wolf followed and the wolf said little pigs little pigs let me in and they said not by my hair and my chinny chin chin. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down and that is exactly what the wolf did. Well, after that, the other two pigs had to run to their brother's house that's made of brick. Well, the wolf was feeling very good about himself. So he just walked on over and he knocked on the door and he said, little pigs, little pigs, let me in. And the pigs said, not by my hair and my chinny chin chin. And he said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down but nothing happened, you know? It was made of bricks and he tried again and he huffed and he puffed and nope, he could not blow that house down. So the pigs were all safe and warm in the brick house and the wolf went without anything to eat that day. So that's our normal Three Little Pigs story. But this story that I'm going to tell you about is from the side of the wolf. And it's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf. Now, everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever asked my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf, and you can call me Al. I don't know how the whole big bad wolf thing got started, but this is how it really happened. Maybe it was because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pig. It's just the way we are. And if cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think they were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing started all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back once upon a time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. And I had a terrible sneezing cold. And I was out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. But this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. He built his whole house out of straw. And can you believe, I mean, who in their right mind would build a house out of straw? 
So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk away from somebody else's house. So I called out, little pig, little pig, are you in? But there was no answer. I was just about to go home without a cup of sugar for my poor little granny's cake. That's when my nose started to itch and I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a gigantic sneeze. Achoo! And you know what? That whole straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig dead. Well, he had been home the whole time, but didn't answer. It seemed a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner just lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. It's very simple. Think of the whole big cheeseburger thing. Well, I was feeling a little bit, bit better, but I still didn't have a, my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house and this neighbor was the first little pig's brother. And he was a little bit smarter. He made his house of sticks. And I rang the bell on the stick house and no one answered. So I called out, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled back, go away, woof. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Well, I had just grabbed the doorknob when I let out another sneeze. And I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I started to sneeze a gigantic sneeze. And I went, Achoo! And you're not going to believe this, but the guy's house fell down just like his brother's. Hmm, you would think sticks would be better. And when the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor, I promise. Now, you know, Food spoils if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. Hmm. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. Now this guy was the first and second guy's brother also. And he must have been the smartest of the family. He made his house of bricks. So I knocked on the brick house and there was no answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what? The rude little pig answered back, get out of here, wolf, and don't bother me again. I know, that is rude. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole stack full of sugar and he wouldn't even give me one cup. So my dear sweet granny's birthday cake was never going to be made. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of the cake when I felt my cold coming on, oh no, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again, ah choo! And then the third little pig yelled, your old granny can sit on a pin. What? That is awful. Now I'm usually pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. 
then the cops drove up and of course I was trying to break down the pig's door and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and wheezing. It was a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. I was in the newspaper being a big bad wolf. The newspapers found out that the two pigs I had for dinner, they figured out the stick guy was going to borrow a cup of sugar. It didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huffing and puffing and blowing your house down. And they made me look like a big bad wolf. And that's it. That's the whole story. I was framed. But maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar. And that is the end. See how wonderful it is to take stories that you know and kind of create them and make them a little bit sillier than what they were. And you can do this at home. I know you've heard a ton of different fairy tales. And that is actually the theme of our summer reading this year. All about tall tales and fairy tales and fractured fairy tales. So when you are at home in the evening and you want to just do a little bit of fun playing, think of uh, one of your fairy tales that you know. And then you can tell the story to your family, how you made it up. Or you can create little puppets like I have here. I made the three little pigs homes on a stick and I have the three little pigs here and you can make up a story. And of course, if you have three little pigs, you gotta have the big bad wolf. So you can create your own little story with stick figures. You can do a flannel board like I did at the beginning. Just have fun and explore with fairy tales. And don't forget the fun fractured ones too. Have a good day. I hope you're having a great summer and I hope you're doing summer reading and getting your points in. And I will talk again to you soon. Have a good day. Bye.